Welcome to our service today, which comes from St. Maxentius Church, because today, the 26th of June, is St. Maxentius Day. St. Maxentius is not a local saint. He was from the centre of France. He's not a recent character. He is from the 5th century. He was born in 448 AD. We're not quite sure how he got linked to this particular church in this particular parish, but God's ways are different from our ways, and sometimes we don't know what impact we have on other people. So as we gather to worship, may we remember those who come and pray with us. Maybe we've never met them. Maybe they're from further afield. May we pray for each other and support each other. May we hear God's word. And may we not only just pray for each other, but may we pray for God's world. We remember too this week that it is St Peter's Day on Wednesday and we pray for our parish of St Peter's in Belmont. The saints are there to encourage us and to inspire us, but we are called to walk as God calls us to walk in the world today. And our first hymn, One More Step. remember St. Peter, a man of faith but also failing, we thank you for his faith. Help us be people of faith. Forgive us our doubts. Forgive us our failings. Forgive us our lack of understanding. As you prayed for Peter and forgave him, so may we ask for your forgiveness for us. And as we remember Maxentius today, a man who lived in war-torn times, we thank you for his example and his leadership, his courage and his faith. We pray, Lord, that you would still the hands of violence and change the hearts of the aggressors, that all may live in the peace that you desire, safe and free. Our reading from Luke chapter 9 as Jesus begins his journey towards Jerusalem is read by Barbara MacDonald from St Anne's. A reading from Luke chapter 9. When the days drew near for him to be taken up, he set his face to go to Jerusalem, and he sent messengers ahead of him. On their way, they entered the village of the Samaritans, to make ready for him, but they did not receive him, 
because his face was set towards Jerusalem. When his disciples, James and John, saw it, they said, Lord, do you want us to command fire to come down from heaven and consume them? But he turned and rebuked them. Then they went on to another village. As they were going along the road, someone said to him, I will follow you wherever you go. And Jesus said to him, Foxes have holes and birds of the air have nests, but the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. To another he said, Follow me. But he said, Lord, first let me go and bury my father. But Jesus said to him, Let the dead bury their own dead. But as for you, go and proclaim the kingdom of God. Another said, I will follow you, Lord, but let me first say farewell to those at my home. Jesus said to him, no one who puts a hand to the plough and looks back is fit for the kingdom of God. Jesus is on the way. He's on the way to Jerusalem, where the ultimate scenes of his earthly life will be played out. He's determined to follow this way, as he knows it is the way that God has planned for him. It won't be an easy journey, but it's the way in which Jesus will go. As he travels, he wants to instruct his disciples in how to they will be called upon to follow the way of Christ after he has left them in his bodily form. In this section of Luke's Gospel, Jesus is the teacher and the disciples are the learners. And they still, like us, have a great deal to learn. Throughout the, th throughout, the theme of Jesus' teaching is that the disciples must learn to follow, follow, follow. In our Gospel reading today, we hear of three incidents concerning people who express a desire to follow in the way of Christ. To the first would-be follower, as Michael Wilcox says, Jesus points out that the security of hearth and home, which one expects in a normal life, has to take second place where commitment to the Son of God is concerned. In the second and third, those would-be followers receive a similar response. Commitment to God even takes precedent over care for one's family. In saying this, Jesus is demonstrating that this is where total commitment lies. He's not saying that the other concerns are not important. Jesus says, I am following the way of God. This is how you too can do the same. Jesus is not saying that personal security, accepted customs and home ties and responsibilities are not important. He accepts and approves of them as a central part of the social life that God has created for his people. This will be the usual manner in which his followers will live. The vital question is, however, what happens when there is a crucial decision to be made that will most likely upset the apple cart? It's like making a decision when you come to a fork in the road. Which way do we go? Which is the way in which God wants us to go? When God calls, how ready are we to respond? How ready are we to go against accepted custom and stand out for God? In Luke chapter 5, we hear the story of Levi, the tax collector, who actually did what Jesus asked. He left everything with which he was familiar and followed Jesus. This then is the crux of our gospel today. When, he, when it becomes necessary to make a choice, which will we follow? The norms of society, security, comfort or convention, or the way of Christ? Jesus Christ is the way, the truth and the life. He was prepared to give his all for us. Can we, in our lives, follow, follow, follow in his way and give our all for him? And our prayers are led by Angie from St Peter's. Our Father, 
Help us to let go of our often all-consuming desire for worldly comforts and securities. And instead, put our trust in your Holy Spirit to love and save, not hate and destroy. Lord, we pray for all churches across our world. We pray for their common desire to confess the Lord Jesus Christ as God and Saviour. We pray for all churches in the world who remain persecuted for their faith. We pray for our local churches, for our team of clergy, and also every member who is part of our church family. We rejoice in our church, Lord. We rejoice in you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Dear Father, we pray for all the countries of the world who live in conflict at this time. We pray also for the refugees forced to flee their homes in order to find safety. We give thanks for all involved in offering a haven, for the Holy Spirit shines from these actions of love. We also pray for all around the world who are impacted by natural disasters at this time, such as floods and tornadoes. Our world is fragile, Lord, we pray that we can all come together to heal and protect it. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Dearest Lord, we pray for our communities at home, where we live. We give thanks for the many local projects underway, set to improve the quality of life for each other here especially advancements in health care and homes for all. Give guidance to the decision makers, but may we also show your light of love and compassion wherever the opportunity shows itself. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the sick and troubled in body, soul and mind. We pray for comfort, Lord, for care, for relief. We give thanks for all who tend to the sick in all of the roles involved. We pray for those known to us. May your spirit shine upon them. May they feel your love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Our Father in heaven, we pray for those who have died, who are now with you. Those unknown to us, and especially those we know. Hold us close as we grieve. Hold us close as we feel the pain of loss. Help us to take comfort from your will. Help us, dear Father, to trust in you. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. So may we continue to pray, may we continue to journey with God on the path that he calls us to, and may our churches and our homes be places of welcome for everybody. Our second hymn, All Are Welcome.
For the saints of old who have inspired us, we thank you. For the saints of our youth who showed us something of God, we thank you. For the saints of today who shine God's light in the darker places of our world, we thank you. The saints in heaven cheer us on. Surrounded by such a cloud of witnesses, may we have confidence in our own journey of faith, hold fast to what is of God, and live for Christ in this world. Amen.